final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 12246 in the name of Alec Crowley on UK Government carbon price support exemption for open cast coal sites. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Alec Crowley to open the debate. Seven minutes please Mr Rowley. I thank you, President Officer. I am grateful to those who supported my motion and enabled this debate to take place tonight on what I believe is an issue of the utmost importance for my constituents and for communities across many of the former coalfield areas of Scotland. In my own constituency, I have at Crossgates the Muirdeen open cast site and at Kelty the St Ninian site, and to the west near Oakley there is Blair House. For the first Two of these, there was thankfully a bond in place when ATH resources and then Scottish Coal both went into administration, which meant that at least a level of restoration would be carried out. But there is scope for a better level of restoration, even where there is some restoration that has been able to take place. In the case of Blair House in Fife, the drawn down of the existing bond is critical to funding a viable restoration and the Council are still advancing on this. Initial claims for repayment have been rejected by the Royal Sun Alliance. Further legal advice is being sought on the next steps and actions including possibility of court action being considered. Fife Council, like many local authorities, is supporting the proposed carbon tax. Presiding officer, whilst my focus today is to raise awareness of the massive environmental nightmare that has been left scarring many parts of Scotland's countryside, I still cannot understand why those companies, namely ATH Resources and Scottish Coal, and their directors have not been under investigation and are not being brought to task for their role in this environmental disaster. But the point of this debate is to support the proposal for a carbon price support exemption. I am pleased to say that the Chancellor has signalled um, his intention to work with the Scottish Coal Task Force to deliver a solution for the restoration. The Scottish Coal Task Force, under the leadership of Fergus Ewan, um, has confirmed its backing to the CPS exemption and its willingness to work with the UK Government to design and deliver such a scheme. Whilst there is still work to be done, this is a step in the right direction, for there are many sites that have absolutely no solution or a very poor solution. Blair House is the best Fife example where there is no solution without CPS exemption support unless bond funding um, the position is resolved. But across Scotland, there are a lot of sites like this. Indeed, the extent and seriousness of the problem cannot be understated. It is on an unprecedented scale. Some 3,500 he hectares of despoiled land. A backlog that represents years of neglect that will take years to sort. Multiple dangerous, unprofiled and uncontrolled water bodies. Sites that are too large and vast to fence, let alone secure. Beyond the general flooding and the site degradation, costs of essential pumping, monitoring and basic security will represent an ongoing cost that most likely will have to be met by local authorities. There is an absolute need to look for a solution and look for a solution now. The problem has been around for two years since the failure of those companies, but communities have put up with the blight for even longer. Problems is worsening as sites flood and degrade. Dangerous, uh, dangers and risks are there for all to see and therefore harder and harder to ignore. The task force has met and been supported by all key departments and stakeholders and no solution or potential solution has been found until now. So we should be clear that the CPS exemption is the only solution on the table. The only way to fix a problem of this size is to take a large proportion of the capacity that caused the problem, albeit other operators, and direct that capacity to solving this problem. A problem of the scale needs game-changing solutions. 
Whatever solution is found, it needs to result in a large part of the current industry capacity being applied to the problem. There is no shortcut or quick solution. The CPS exemption will be a catalyst to focus effort and attention away from greenfield sites to brownfield projects that will deliver restoration. There are two main benefits from finding a solution now quickly. First, industry capacity is ready and available today to deal with the solution. Oil and gas price collapse have pulled down already weak coal prices. Greenfield projects are reducing in number and operators will focus only on a very small number that are still profitable. It is therefore the ideal time to focus efforts on brownfield sites. Not only is the capacity available, but the brownfield sites offer the lifeboat to the industry to see if the coal price recovers. Second, unless that lifeboat can be found, then the capacity will decline and disappear fast. Jobs and skills will disappear. More importantly, mining equipment will be sold abroad. The capability to restore these sites will decline. A huge amount of mining capacity will be required to deal with this problem. Even then, it will take years. Timing-wise, it is a perfect convergence of one, the need for restoration and jobs, two, the availability of huge capacity to deal with the problem. Therefore, the current market conditions means the CPS exemption offers a rate and level of restoration that no one previously thought possible. Hargreaves have tackled some of the sites, but by their own admission, due to the shortage of funds, they have only scratched the surface. This proposal has the backing of industry, the backing of all affected local authorities. We need to take action and I hope that this parliament can unite to push the UK government to agree to sign up to this scheme. Thank you. Many thanks. We now turn to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes or so. I call Patrick Harvey to be followed by Adam Ingram. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm grateful for the opportunity to contribute to this debate and I... Uh, grateful for the opportunity to contribute and I congratulate Alex Rowley for bringing this motion to the chamber. I don't doubt for a moment his commitment to those of his constituents, both his current constituents uh, and those he represented in his previous role uh, within Fife Council. I don't doubt his commitment to their interests, uh, those who are living with the environmental wreckage of this destructive and deeply irresponsible industry which has been allowed to thrive in this country for too long. I'm bound to say that I don't agree with his conclusion uh, about the uh, carbon price support exemption, and I'll explain why. This is an industry, like many others, involved in the extraction of mineral resources, which has behaved with a breathtaking irresponsibility over many, many years. Happy to walk away with the proceeds of that economic activity, but abandoning the liabilities, the environmental and social liabilities which have been built up. And sadly, all too often we see those assets then coming back into active use to enrich some other company that comes along, but those liabilities falling on the public. The public who live with uh, destructive, the, the results of destructive activity which are not uh, being uh, restored and a liability that falls on the public purse in terms of funding that restoration which does take place. And here we are again. Here we are again with both governments sadly uh, seeming to want to continue this destructive activity. Not just in the, the Scottish Government's decisions but also uh, some reserve functions such as the, uh, the approach to uh, rail track access uh, which if it was priced fairly if it was priced fairly, would ensure that this industry was paying a great deal more to take coal onto the railways and effectively we would see an end to open cast extraction. Now some people would clearly not welcome that. Some people look at any kind of economic activity which we're over-reliant on, over-dependent on and say, well, jobs are involved there so we must sustain it. We must sustain those jobs. I will in just a moment. And I, I do find it tiresome how often those who point out the fundamental unsustainability of certain industries, including fossil fuel extraction, 
that we seem to be the ones blamed for pointing out that unsustainability and arguing that a change is necessary. Not just the state of this industry in its own right, but also the likely closure, whether next year or in a few years' time, of Long Gannett, which will deprive the open cast coal industry of a great deal of its market. We don't need the coal anymore because it's not economically, environmentally or socially beneficial to use that in energy generation. It fails every test of modern energy policy, security of supply, low carbon and affordability. I give way to Mr Neil Finlay. Um, living in a, a, a former coal-filled area, I have um, been involved in a, a whole range of um, major land use issues in my area and I have objected several times to open cast coal applications. But does he accept that there are um, specific occasions where it is relevant and appropriate to open cast in order to clean up former industrial sites where that is almost the only option. Patrick Harvey. I, I, I cannot agree. I cannot agree that in order to fund restoration, we have to carry on making the problem worse. And that, I believe, is what will happen. Uh, I'll, I'll wind up in just a moment, Deputy Presiding Officer. That is what I believe would no, I'll happen. I'll give you your time back for the interview. Uh, if we pursue the, the policy that, which is being suggested, and which, let's face it, we should be unsurprised is coming from an industry proposition from the people who want to see this business continue. Hargreaves has suggested this uh, CPS tax exemption. If that is the policy that we pursue, then we will create even more incentives for otherwise marginal uh, projects to be developed and for continuation of open cast extraction where we need to see an end to it. I know that it's not popular in all parts of the, the country, particularly those which have been left dependent on a dying industry. But we need to recognise that this industry is dying if we're going to begin to have the frame of mind which takes us into the development of alternatives. We should be looking at alternative uh, economic uses of these sites, alternative sustainable economic activities in the areas which have become over-dependent on this unsustainable one. But simply digging ourselves ever deeper into the hole that we're in now will make the problem worse, not better. And uh, like RSPB, who've sent a briefing around uh, raising their concerns uh, about the, the CPS exemption, I would argue that there are alternative approaches looking to see the, the decline of this industry, but using public funds to fund the restoration rather than uh, consenting additional uh, open cast extraction as a means of doing that. So I, I welcome the, uh, the, the, the opportunity to debate these issues, but I have to part company uh, on the conclusion. Thank you very much. And I now call Adam Ingram to be followed by Neil Findlay. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Firstly, can I congratulate uh, Alex Rowley on securing this evening's debate. I very much support the general thrust of his arguments and observations uh, that he made this evening. That said, I did take some issue with the terms of the motion, in particular the reference to the limited success of the Scottish Coal Industry Task Force, and damning with faint praise came to mind there. From my perspective, the task force has been a great success bringing all the relevant stakeholders together to ensure, firstly, that the employment crisis created with 700 people thrown out of work was effectively tackled. Mm -hmm. Secondly, that the failures in planning and regulatory regimes were addressed to prevent the mistakes of the past being repeated. And finally, solutions be found to restoration of abandoned open cast sites. Now, clearly, the, la the latter is still a work in progress, but without the task force, I doubt anything of substance would have emerged at all. Now, the subject matter of this debate is a vital constituency interest of mine, given the scale of open cast coal operations in the Ayrshire coal field, which historically has produced over 50% of all open cast coal in Scotland. Consequently, the adverse environmental impact of the collapse of the two coal companies, ATH and the SRG, is of a similar scale. In financial terms, East Ayrshire has been left with a notional bill of £161 million to restore former open cast sites to a state agreed with planning consent, but total restoration bond coverage amounts to only £29 million. 
and some of the bond providers are making life difficult for the council to call down their full value. In physical terms, what we've been left with is 20 square kilometres of abandoned and derelict land pitted with huge sheer-sided voids, many of which have filled with water. So public safety and ongoing pollution threats are of a real and immediate concern. In this context, the CPS exemption proposal from Hargreaves provides the only financially viable plan that could deal with the problem comprehensively and in a manner acceptable to local communities. Indeed, Ian Coburn of Hargreaves, who has done an exceptional job in work working up the details of this proposal, has made it clear that local communities, as well as planning authorities, must have a significant say in the approval of any scheme which emerges from the tendering of process associated with delivering restoration projects. Finally, I, I want to welcome the declaration in the UK budget documentation issued today that the UK government will work closely with the Scottish Coal Industry Task Force to deliver a restoration solution. I hope and trust the, the CPS exemption route in whatever form, and Patrick Harvey should be aware that RSPB favour this the uh, CPS exemption scheme of a different kind to the one proposed by Hargreaves, and I hope such a scheme will be will be action will be taken on it sooner rather than later. I don't know if the minister has any more information that he'll be able to share with us in his summing up, but uh, I would certainly welcome his response to this development. Thank you, presiding officer. Many thanks. And I now call Neil Finlay to be followed by Murdo Fraser. Presiding officer, I didn't particularly intend speaking in this debate, but I just want to reflect on some of the local uh, uh, experience that I ha I've had in my area uh, when I was a councillor. And um, the former Pokemic Colliery, uh, in my area is um, currently undergoing huge redevelopment with the Heartlands project, a, a project that's bringing uh, hundreds, uh, uh, pro probably thousands of homes, a school, retail, industrial units and a major motorway junction onto the M8. And it's, uh, it's beginning to make progress after a period of real difficulty during the uh, recession. But in the middle of the uh, uh, extraction process of open cast on that site, uh, the contractor at that time, Fenton's, went bust. And, uh, but we didn't suffer from the catastrophic impact of that that we're seeing in Fife and uh, Midlothian and elsewhere, because uh, uh, a new contractor came in immediately and there was continuity in the excavation uh, of the high quality coal that was there. Work went on largely without a blip. But that did not um, uh, happen, uh, or had that not happened, then we might have had the same problems. And that was largely avoided by the, the skill and the diligence and the abilities of the local chief planning officer, who I believe is advising the task force, Chris uh, Norman. Um, and what he did was he nego negotiated a very significant and a very tight bond that meant when the, the hole being excavated for the coal was at its deepest, the bond was at its largest. Therefore, uh, had no new con contractor come in, the bond would have covered uh, and fully restored the site. Now, the contractor squealed at that point. They squealed that they wanted to draw down cash from the bond in order to keep their company going. And that was refused. Un and we were under a lot of pressure on the council at that time to, to give in to that. But we refused to do that because we knew that the consequences if the contractor then went bust after taking down the bond would have meant exactly the scenario that we see in Ayrshire and Fife and, and Midlothian. So um, that was a very significant negotiation that went on in order to ensure that that bond was very, very tight. And, and I think there's lessons to be learned from that. The point I made to Mr Harvey, I think you may have misunderstood, is that on that site, in order to remove... A burning bing that was there had been there for decades that was causing the silver in people's houses to tarnish and God knows what to their, uh, was happening to their lungs and to their uh, breathing. In order to get rid of that contaminated land, the water, the flooding, the 
all sorts of problems on that site. Open cast was the only option. It was almost the only game in town. And you may shake your head all you like, Mr Harvey. That was the reality of the situation. Uh, so, yes, all. Patrick Harvey. How on earth can the only solution to environmental destruction be more environmental destruction? Neil Finlay. The method in which they were using to, to deal with the burning bing was to extract, fold the bing into the hole that was there, to extinguish it, to put the, the, the burning bing out, and then uh, um, restore the site. It was actually a very technical process, but it actually was one of the few options that was available on that site. And, uh, you know, uh, had we not went down that route, um, uh, uh, then I think we would have still have had such a huge environmental disaster on our doorstep. So all I say in this debate is that we should learn from what's happened in West Lothian, excellent practice that's went on by the local authority, avoiding the disasters that have happened elsewhere. I don't particularly want to comment on the, the issues around the a, a CPS exemption and all that. I don't know enough about it. All I'm saying is where we've had disasters in Scotland in some areas, we've also had very good experience of uh, local authorities acting very responsibly. Thank you. The last open debate speaker is Murdo Fraser. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, all those who uh, represent areas where mining has taken place are fully aware of the issues facing the open cast industry. Following world prices for coal have put huge pressure on domestic producers. Moreover, as we move increasingly towards a low carbon energy system, demand for coal domestically is going to reduce. Just last week, the Economy, Energy and Tourism Committee took evidence about the future of the Longanet power station in Fife. It may close as early as March next year, but in any event, it is clear the plant has no future beyond 2020, primarily as a result of EU emissions directives and carbon pricing. And Longanet is still a major buyer of coal from Scottish producers. And this creates a headache for our remaining coal companies, among them Hargreaves, who announced last week that 85 jobs are at risk at sites across the country. Hargreaves, based in Durham, have been operating at sites in Fife and Ayrshire, taken over following the collapse of the mining company's Scottish Resources Group and ATH Aardvark in 2013, which Alec Rowley uh, referred to earlier. There is a related issue which Alec Rowley highlighted in the motion this evening in relation to the restoration of existing open cast mines. We are all familiar with the legacy that has been left by previous mining operations at sites in Fife and in Ayrshire, where companies have gone into liquidation, insufficient funds having been put aside to allow these to be properly restored, leaving local communities with the dismal prospect of ugly, unrestored sites on their doorstep, potentially for many years to come. Hargreaves have estimated that the remediation of 35 square kilometres of land could take five years to complete. This work would involve the creation and safeguarding of 1,000 direct mining jobs and 1,500 indirect jobs. But it can only be done if we continue to extract coal from these sites to pay the cost of restoration. And the problem is at the moment that the sums simply don't add up. And that is why Hargreaves have submitted a proposal to DEC and Treasury for carbon price support to free up the necessary resources. And if successful, the CPS exemption would allow for full restoration of the existing sites and an extra 1 million tonnes of coal extracted per annum. This could be done at no net cost to the taxpayer by generating additional fuel duty and protecting existing jobs. The Hargreaves proposal has been submitted to the Scottish Government's Coal Industry Task Force, of which I am pleased to be a member. And last year I wrote to DEC with my support for these proposals, which of course are currently uh, under consideration within the UK Treasury. Hargreaves have worked hard to gain cross-party support for what they propose. Now, of course, it's very easy for us in this Parliament to be calling upon the UK Government to forgo tax revenue. But I do hope both Treasury and DEC look upon this favourably, and today's announcement uh, from the Chancellor provides some encouragement. Now, I am aware that these proposals from Hargreaves do not command unanimous support. There have been competing proposals, and there is scepticism in some quarters as to whether the CPS exemption will deliver the benefits that Hargreaves set out. Nevertheless, action does need to be taken. The danger is that without some intervention, 
There will be no restoration of these sites. There will be a loss of jobs. We will lose the skills involved in the industry for good. And future generations will still have to live with a legacy of inaction. So I hope we will see progress in the matter, either along the lines of the Hargreaves proposal or in some other manner. I hope this debate is helpful in advancing that agenda. And can I close by commending Alec Rowley for bringing it to the Chamber? Thank you. Many thanks. And can I now invite Fergus Ewing to respond to the debate? Minister, seven minutes or so, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I too would like to congratulate Alex Rowley for bringing this uh, matter to the debate uh, and uh, also uh, recognise uh, the strong constituency interest he, he has. Uh, and uh, like uh, Mr Ingram, I find myself in agreement with most of what he said this evening. Um, the coal task force was, as, as he set out, presiding officer, set up in the aftermath of the insolvency and administration of, uh, of uh, Scottish resources, or Scottish coal as was, and ATH. And the purposes of the task force uh, were twofold. Firstly, to seek the re-engagement of the, as many as possible of the several hundred employees who lost their jobs, many of them in parts of Scotland, presiding officer, where there are simply very few other alternatives, if any, and none at the level of remuneration that the employees enjoyed. Uh, so the first task was re-engagement of the employees. And the second task was uh, to find an approach to tackle the, the considerable problem of restoration of the cold out site. So those were the two objectives. Uh, Mr Ingram has referred to the work which the, the group has done. Uh, I have been uh, pleased to be the co-chair along with Russell Griggs of the group and it's been the largest task force that I've ever chaired and I've chaired quite a few uh, and I've been very grateful for the contribution of, uh, of Mr Rowley, of uh, Mr Ingram, of Sandra Osborne, uh, of Aileen Campbell who's, who's here this evening, uh, of uh, Murdo Fraser, of Willie Rennie who's, who's not here uh, the, this evening, uh, of Willie Coffey, uh, of uh, 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 Cathy Jamieson, and I mention that and the names, I hope I haven't omitted anybody inadvertently, presenting officer, because it has been a cross-party effort. We have, I think, largely put politics aside. I can't think of any of the eight meetings of the task force where party politics has interposed or been relevant, really, and that, I think, has helped to drive forward some of the solutions and achievements that the task force has reached, and one of them was to see the re-engagement of 500 people from Hargreaves in, in just under a year. That's a terrific achievement given the difficulties presiding officer. Uh, I also pay tribute to the other players, the, the companies involved, uh, the Keir, Banks and others who, <coughs> who have paid, played a part and, and other service companies such as Caterpillar and Terex who to some extent are dependent upon the continuation of this work uh, and the whole indirect jobs that are dependent upon the sector up to several thousand jobs as uh, Mr Finlay referred to in coaling communities. There's a whole network of subcontractors and jobs that are dependent upon this continuing. So we had a heavy onus of responsibility, but we, we did manage to play a part in seeing that happen and devote £200,000 to ticketing issues. We persuaded the ORR to cut their increase in freight charges from four to one pounds a tonne, a great achievement after we gave ORR a, a, a very significant uh, cross-examination on the task force. Uh, we've made progress, or local authorities have made progress in calling up bonds, and they have had successes. It's difficult work, presiding officer, and they've achieved that success. Success by working together and leaving the politics aside. Uh, the task force, rather than fold, continued because of the new emerging series of problems which is caused by the low world coal prices, as Murdo Fraser rightly referred to. This places uh, considerable further economic pressure upon the operators uh, uh, and, uh, I I in my opinion, unless addressed by a solution uh, such as is on now on the table, may lead to the termination of the open cast sector in perhaps two or three years' time. Now, uh, the proposal that was put by the industry and was adopted unanimously by the task force is that there should be an extension to the existing exemptions from the carbon price support mechanism, the carbon tax. And it should be very narrowly defined. 
Uh, restoration projects would be subject to competitive tender and an open process. The proposal uses coal that remains on or adjacent to the sites to subsidise the cost of the restoration scheme. Extraction of coal would be considered where the extraction creates value and a net cost reduction for a restoration scheme. The coal authority would have oversight, therefore, and provide ballast and uh, an element of uh, control mechanism which is necessary for such a scheme. The, uh, uh, the proposal would cover all sites that were left with unfunded restoration liabilities. The definition of orphan sites needs to be carefully uh, considered, but no sites that should not attract exemption support are inadvertently supported. The starting premise for the objective of the scheme would be to deliver restoration to the level that was consented at the time of failure of ATH and SRG. Now, I'm very pleased that uh, in page 97 of the Red Book associated with the budget announcement today by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, the UK Government has uh, made the following uh, statement. They say they will work closely with the Scottish Coal Task Force and industry stakeholders to explore alternative options for addressing the environmental liabilities associated with unrestored open cast mines in Scotland. That is a possible step forward and therefore it is one that I welcome in the spirit in which it is offered and the spirit to which I referred that has been pursued, the, the one that uh, I followed in the open cast task force. The statement does not actually refer to the UK government agreeing in principle that there should be the exemption which is sought but be the, that as it may, let us hope that that is what is in their mind. Having become aware of this today, presiding officer, as the Minister for Energy in the Scottish Government, I will therefore make quick, immediate contact with the UK Government to seek a meeting with the Exchequer Secretary, Priti Patel, uh, to press for adoption of the solution, which has such cross-party support here in Scotland, and I will do so uh, and uh, be able to relay to her the uh, broad-based support of all the main parties in Scotland, and I'm very pleased to do so. Um, I want to say that if this proposal does not, uh, or some uh, version of it, is not adopted, then I'm very concerned for the future of all of the people who are working in these coaling communities. I've met many of them. I've met their representatives. I've discussed this with their union representatives for whom I have the greatest respect. Uh, they are terrific people. Uh, it's been an honor to meet them. Uh, I want to do right by them, presiding officer. I, with the support of colleagues in the main parties in Scotland and working with party spokespeople, will do everything I possibly can to see this exemption being granted. Calling and restoring go together. Those uh, voices on the fringes who say that you can have restoring without coaling, I'm afraid, do not understand the reality of it, as has been set out uh, both by Mr. Rowley and Mr. Fraser. Fortunately, that is a minority view, uh, and I'm delighted that in this debate we have heard a very clear, and I think uh, virtually unanimous view, that we have managed to work together, those of us who display some vestiges of common sense and rationality, to work together to work to help those who deserve our help, that elect us here to help them, to stand up for their interests and not regard their work as dispensable on the altar of some ideological view. So I will do everything within my power, presiding officer, to further the work, the very good work, that uh, those of us who have taken part positively in this debate have displayed this evening and I will put every possible effort into it, and I guarantee every member in this chamber that that is what I will do. Thank you. That then ends Alec Crowley's members' debate on UK Government carbon price support exemption for open cast coal sites, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.